Hello, this is Kaylin Huntress, and today we're going to talk about seven steps to turn your signature speech into a signature offer. This presentation was originally given for the National Speakers Association annual conference, Influence19. You can go on to hashtag Influence19 to see a lot of the photos and a lot of the fun stuff that happened there. And uh, what I'm going to do in this recording is just go through the presentation as I gave it at that event. Now, the reason why I was chosen for this presentation was because I was filling in a last minute slot. Uh, Dr. Christina Burris was originally scheduled to talk about how to monetize your thought leadership, but she unfortunately broke her kneecap. And I was on the phone with one of the co-chairs of the conference, Mike Rayburn, when uh, he said, man, I don't know how I'm going to fill this slot at the conference this weekend. And I said, well, what if I flew up to Denver from New Zealand? And he said, if you fly to Denver from New Zealand, the spot is yours. So the next day, I was on a plane to give this presentation. Now, the reason why I was a good fit for this is because helping thought leaders monetize their thought leadership is what I do in my digital marketing agency, Stellar Platform. And I work with authors, coaches, and speakers on helping them develop their message and their, uh, their sales process. And through Stellar Platforms, I had a unique opportunity to provide this information, and so now I'm going to share it with you. The first step out of these seven steps to turn your signature speech into a signature offer is to identify the transformation that happens in your speech. The audience before your speech is different than the, than the audience after your speech. And if you can clarify what that transformation is, if you can articulate it and distill it down into one word, that's the bridge we're going to use between your signature speech and your signature offer. So you might already know your transformation. You may have it in a sentence or a phrase. And what I want you to do is to try and distill this transformation that happens during your speech and bring it down into one word. And I'll give you an example. Mike Rayburn has a one word transformation of innovation. After somebody sees his what if keynote experience, they start thinking about possibility. They have this innovation capability that they didn't have before. And so together, he and I produced this online course called the What If Challenge. And it's a series of 16 videos delivered via email. And they're short. They're three to four minutes long. And each one starts with Mike on a guitar lick. And uh, then he asks a what if question. And then he tells a story or gives some context. And then ends every weekly video with the same call to action. Now get out your what if journal and let's rock and roll. And so the, the transformation of, of having more innovative thinking is what his signature offer provides. And that's linked to his signature speech because it's the same transformation. Mike's also written a book called What If. When people hire him for a keynote, his most well-known keynote is the What If keynote. And now he has the What If Challenge. So do you see how this transformation is blended through all of his signature offerings? I'll give you another example. Sally Hogshead. She's got a one-word transformation of fascination. Her book, Fascinated, talks about the 49 personality archetypes and how best to fascinate people, depending on your archetype. Her keynote, How to Fascinate, it goes through the mechanics of how this works. And she also has a signature offer called the Complete Fascination Business System, where for a couple thousand dollars, you can have one of her certified facilitators come into your business and help your staff identify their personality archetype, and learn how to fascinate people with that archetype. Here's a third example. Simon Sinek, who has the most widely viewed TED Talk on the internet, which is called Start With Why. He famously said, people don't care what you do, they care why you do it. His book, Start With Why, is basically his TED Talk with a lot more uh, case studies and statistics threaded throughout. And his signature offerings, he's got a series of offerings that he provides through his website that are all based around this same signature idea of identifying your why. So what's your transformation? What's the transformation that happens in your speech? Because that's going to be the groundwork for your signature offering. The second step 
is to target a specific type of person who actively craves that transformation. This isn't somebody who would benefit from your transformation. It's someone who's searching for it. Someone who will put other things aside in order to gain this transformation. We want to target these people. And these buyer personas, these ideal client profiles, these customer avatars, if we can construct a well-targeted customer avatar, then selling becomes really easy. And during this conference, Influence 2019, there were a lot of presenters who talked about the importance of having customer avatars. And when I surveyed the audience and I asked how many people have documented customer avatars that you can print off on a printer, less than a quarter of the people in the audience raised their hand. So even though this is important, this is tough work to do and it's not easy. And that's why I made a process to make it easy. If you go to stellarplatforms.com slash slides, you can get the slides for this presentation, as well as a coupon code to get my customer avatar masterclass. And this is a, uh, a short masterclass. It takes 60 to 90 minutes to complete. And I give you templates and workbooks for creating your own customer avatars. So if this is something that you actually want to do, then this is a practical tool that you can use to do it. But having the customer avatar doesn't help if you don't actually know people who match that customer avatar. So once you have a customer avatar, the next step is to make a list of 12 people that you know who match that avatar. If you can't make a list of a dozen people who match this avatar, then there's one of two problems. Either you aren't targeting your avatar well enough, or you're not hanging out with the right people. You want to be conversing with your customer base regularly so that you can find out who they are and what makes them tick. And that's why the third step is to survey 12 people. Talking to 12 people in your target market is one of the best ways to validate your idea and find out if it's something actually worth doing. And here's a simple two question survey. What's the biggest problem you deal with relating to this topic? And where do you go online to research solutions? If you can get in the habit of asking these two questions anytime you're interacting with one of your customer avatars, you're going to get a whole lot of useful marketing research. Now, if you're a web geek like me, then you can do an online survey with multiple questions and get all, the, but I'm the type of person who likes doing that. I can put together a, a, an intake form and a thank you page and an email autoresponder in about 20 minutes because I like doing that sort of thing. But if that stresses you out, then you can just focus on these two verbal questions. Our next case study is somebody who's a web geek and he's considered the godfather of a lot of the internet surveys online right now. Uh, Ryan Levesque wrote a signature book called Ask, and it's all about the power of the deep dive survey. Uh, he's got a signature offering, a number of them. There's the Ask Method Masterclass, which is delivered online. There's the Ask Academy, which is training with his certified facilitators. There's his live event. Do you see how these signature offers all build off the same signature message in his signature speech? What I like so much about how Ryan has divided his offerings is he covers all four offer brackets. There are four ways that people can pay you money. Just four. They can pay you one-to-one, -one, which is when you charge your hourly rate and somebody pays you for that time. They can pay one-to-few, which is where everybody gets a deal. Your customer pays less than your hourly rate and you earn more than your hourly rate because there's more people paying. Then there's one-to-many, where lots of people pay a small ticket to come and see you. And this is actually where your keynote lies is one to many and some people can make the argument that a keynote sale is a one-to-one -one sale because you're you're closing one person and you're making one sale for a large amount however i see a keynote delivery as one to many and it's treated like you are interacting with a whole lot of people and the big difference between one to few and one to many is you don't get a say in who's there with one to few, you can curate the group. You can say, okay, you are invited in and you are not invited in. But with one to many, whoever shows up in the audience it, it are the people who show up. And then there's one to any, 
which is where you don't interact with the audience. They interact with your material, and one-to-any is infinitely scalable. So you can think of one-to-any as your book. You don't need to be there to deliver your book, but people can still interact with your ideas from anywhere they are on the, on the globe. So if we were going to put these on a chart, we'd say that price goes up and people goes to the right. You can serve more people in the offer brackets to the right, and you can charge a higher price for the ones that are higher vertically. And that's why one-to-one -one is often your, your premium rate. Even if you don't charge one-to-one, -one, if I said, hey, I want to meet you in LA for three hours and I'm going to pay you X number of dollars, there's some number which would make you agree. And that hourly rate, even if you don't advertise it, even if you don't charge by it, it's really useful to calculate all the other numbers so that you know if it's worth your time. There's an interesting dividing line here between one-to-many and one-to-any. The top three offer brackets, they require your presence. You have to actually show up for one-to-one, one-to-few, and one-to-many. One-to-any doesn't require your presence. And that's why I think online courses are priced all wrong. Online courses are priced like they're a class. They have this premium level pricing because you're getting all of this great material. But what we found over the last few years is that customers actually have a lot of resistance to purchasing pre-recorded videos for a high price if they don't get access to the teacher and if they don't get a group of peers who are working through the material with them. Those two benefits of having a class experience in a classroom, you lose those in online courses. And so we've been experimenting at Stellar Platforms with book-based pricing for online courses. Because an online course, as a one-to-any offer, it's delivered much like a book. The teacher doesn't have to be there, and the student works through it at their own pace. And if you think of the last book that had a dramatic and profound impact on your life or your business, go ahead and think of that book right now. The last fantastic book you read. Now ask yourself, would you have paid $697 for that book? I'm Assuming the answer is no, I have yet to hear anybody say that even if they got great dramatic impact from a book, that they would pay hundreds of dollars for it. But we are asking people to pay hundreds of dollars for online courses. And right now, if you may have noticed, they're not selling at that price point. And I think that this is the reason why, that they're being priced as one to few offers instead of one to any offers. And so I'm going to give you another case study of somebody who uses these four offer brackets really well. And his name is Peter Cook. And he is a business coach in Australia. And he wrote a book called The Thought Leader's Practice. And The Thought Leader's Practice goes through his methodology that he shares with Matt Church and Scott Stein. The three of them have this methodology of repackaging your intellectual property and delivering it through these six different delivery modes. He's also got a signature speech on should you run a practice or should you run a business. He's also got a group training program where for 12 months you fly to Australia for, uh, five times and every three months you have a three-day training session with him and with other thought leaders. And then for select people he also offers one-on-one -on -one coaching. So do you see how this same signature speech complements these other signature offerings. I'll show you how he used it with me. He reached out to me in uh, Wellington, New Zealand, which is where I live. And he said, hey, I'm going to be over in Wellington on such and such a date. Seems like we have some interests in common. Uh, let's get a coffee. And so I said, sure. And uh, put it into my calendar. And he said, let me send you a copy of my book. And I said, okay. And he shipped me a free copy of his book. And so I got the book and started reading it and loved the material. And then I showed up at this fancy hotel in Wellington with 85 other people. We all had coffee and we listened to his signature speech. The people in that audience who really resonated with his message and with his methodology, they said, okay, the Thought Leaders Business School is for me. 
And all Peter had to do was show up and give his signature speech and let his systems do the selling. His whole methodology is based around the six delivery modes. A thought leader can be a speaker, an author, a trainer, a mentor, a facilitator, and a coach. And if you're delivering in one of these modes, making a right angle pivot into a second mode simultaneously is how you grow a thought leader's practice. And he's got a lot of really practical tools, like the cluster strategy, where you combine a market, a message, and one of these six methods. And then if you want to spin up another arm of your business, you simply switch out one of these three, the message, the market, or the method. And there's a lot more practical tools in the Thought Leaders Business School that I'm not gonna go into in this presentation. But if this is the sort of thing that interests you, then I'll tell you, the Thought Leaders Practice book, is it has a lot of really useful information. I highly recommend it. So the fifth step for creating a signature offer from your signature speech is to select a launch date. And this is the date when you're gonna start delivering. Notice we haven't talked about production. Making the offer is something we haven't even gotten to yet. But the launch date is really effective to select because then you can work backwards and create a production schedule. Now I gave this presentation in late July of 2019 and using a, a launch date of January 1st, we, could, we created this sample production schedule that people could do from the moment of this presentation up to January 1st. So if you wanted to launch your new offer on January 1st, you could have a six week promotion campaign built in from mid November to the end of the year. And then I put in a two week buffer, the first two weeks of November, just because when I'm creating timelines, I find it useful to have these buffers so that as things change, which they inevitably do during the production process, you have some wiggle room built in there. I've also put in some stages for surveying the audience, for making the customer avatar, and identifying the transformation, that one big first step, if you start there, then you only have five months to get to the launch date. The sixth step is to ask people to buy it. Now, again, we haven't produced the offer yet. What we're doing before production is we're actually asking people to buy it. And there's two important reasons for doing it this way. I know it seems counterintuitive, but these reasons are very helpful. The first reason is, if nobody wants to buy your offer, then don't waste your time making it. It's really useful to know that in advance. I don't know if you've ever spent mon months and months producing something, but if you, but if you go through all that prof process and then nobody wants to buy it, it's a real drain on your business and your emotional state. So if you could find out beforehand if people are willing to buy it, it makes it a lot more likely that you're gonna produce something that'll be profitable. The second reason this is really helpful is that you know thought leaders are supportive of each other. Your family is supportive of you. Your friends, they wanna see you succeed. So when you tell them about your new offer, they're gonna say, yeah, that's great, go do it, until you ask them to pull out a credit card. And then they will tell you, if the delivery method doesn't make sense, or if it doesn't actually solve their problems, or if they're not the right person. When you ask somebody for a credit card, you get the real objection. And these are the two reasons why it's so helpful to ask people to buy. Now, as thought leaders, you know, some people can feel really um, uh, uncomfortable with selling. And so I'm gonna give you a super simple pitch, okay? Hey, I've got this new thing I'm making, and I think you'd be a great match for it. It costs this much, and it'll be available on this date. Do you want to buy it? That's all you have to do. You just ask this simple question, and people will tell you whether or not it's worth it, and whether or not they're a match. The seventh step, the final step, after you've done these first six ones, is to build your offer. You don't start by building it. You do your market research first to validate that there are people who want to buy it, and then you build it on the transformation. Now, when I'm building offers with my clients, I typically stack them in a value ladder. 
And I've got a value ladder workbook, which is available with the slides for this presentation. And it helps you lay out where all your offers are in a value ladder. And when you see them all laid out in one document, it helps you identify which pieces of content are better suited for low priced products or high priced products or subscribers only content or trip wires, those low price $7 offers that help segment your buyers from your subscribers. You might have content sitting around that's not doing anything that would serve as a really good tripwire. And so that's part of the services that I provide for my clients, is helping them figure out which offers go where in their value ladder. So now let's review the seven steps to pre-sell your offer. I, I wanted to call this presentation seven steps to pre-sell your offer, but nobody would have attended because who wants to pre-sell? But what people do want to do is to take their signature speech and make a signature offer out of it. And I used this first step to get that title. I identified the transformation. People wanted to know, how do I turn my signature speech into a signature offer? That's the transformation. Once you identify your transformation, you target an avatar, talk to 12 of them, select an offer bracket, set your launch date, ask people to buy it, and then, final step, you build it. There's a lot of moving pieces with building your offer. And figuring out all those moving pieces, that's something that I love to do with Stellar Platforms. And that's why I offer free 30-minute marketing consultations. By offering these free consultations, it does a couple of things. First, it allows me to demonstrate my expertise to my target market. Second, it allows me to build relationships with people who might want to hire me or might just want to know more about me so they can refer me business later. And third, it helps me understand what's actually happening with people in the market. And this is the most valuable for me, hearing the struggles that people are going with, knowing what's confusing to them, knowing what they really want to accomplish. I find the that insight so valuable, it's worth me giving away 30 minutes of my time. And so if you're watching this presentation and you've got this far and you'd like to have a free 30 minute strategy consultation with me, you can go to stellarplatforms.com slash consultation. And the only thing I ask is that you fill out a form before we talk. It'll take you 10 to 15 minutes. But what that form will do is it'll give me enough information so that I can come to our conversation prepared with ideas and we can just hit the ground running. Now, in order to prepare you for this call, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why I called my business Stellar Platforms. And platforms have a lot of different meanings. The way that I use a platform is that it's a collection of offerings and ideas delivered by a single person. That's your platform. If you have something to say and something to sell, you have a platform. And these are the people that I work with, is people who have something to say and something to sell. And the way that I help them improve their platform is by fo focusing on the cornerstones. Every platform has four cornerstones. And your platform works best when these cornerstones are balanced. If your cornerstones are unbalanced, you will always be leaning to the side of your weakest cornerstone. Does that make sense? Like if I put a platform on top of these four, I'm going to lean right over to the side of the shortest cornerstone. And that's why I focus on building up the cornerstones because that's what's going to help people stand sturdy on their platform so they can shine. There's four levels of platforms. The first level is a soapbox. Anybody can get up on a soapbox and get some people to listen to them. But it's not a commercially viable enterprise until it's a showroom. And then your messaging is focused around the things you have to offer. And would you like to buy this? And this is how it starts. And here's where you sign. The showroom is where you have a business that supports you. And moving from the showroom to the stage is the really fun part. Because this is where you develop systems that sell for you. So that you don't have to describe your offers every time you're talking to somebody. Your systems sell for you. You can just get up on a stage and provide your insight and shine your light and the right people will self-select and say, yes, I'd like to work with you. They download your lead magnet. They enroll in your online course. They go through your onboarding sequence and they 
they respond to your offers as they are automatically and smoothly provided to them. And that's a lot of the work that I do, is helping people get from the showroom to the stage. The fourth level of platform, the stadium, I don't do a lot of work on that level because you really need a full-time staff to manage a stadium level platform. This is where Beyonce says, I really like this eyeshadow and the stock price goes up. This is where there's a staff of, of people like me. There's many different marketers handling many different moving parts. And because I like to work with a lot of clients simultaneously, I generally help people move between the lower levels because that's, that's where I like to work. And the way that I do this is by focusing on the cornerstones. Now we've already said you've got these two front cornerstones, what you say and what you sell. And these are the external cornerstones. This is what people see when they're interacting with your platform. But you also have these two internal cornerstones, which are just as important. These are your strategy and your systems. If any one of these cornerstones is at a different level than the other, your platform is off balanced. You can have a stage level strategy and a stage level message and a stage level selling process. But if your systems are down at the soapbox level, your attention is always going to be demanded by your systems because that cornerstone isn't tall enough yet. So helping people balance these cornerstones, that's what I do. We could call these ones on the left the visionary cornerstones, and these one on the right are the practical cornerstones. And I tend to do a lot of my work here in the practical cornerstones. I can offer advice and coaching on the visionary practical uh, on the visionary cornerstones but my skills are really well suited to the practical ones. And I'll give you an example. I had a, a New York Times bestseller, uh, bestselling author who came to me and said, I want to do a webinar funnel. And I said, okay. And I brought out my templates and I said, this is what we're going to produce. And I made all the emails and I made all the landing pages. And, and I said, you know, there's something going on right here where we have an opportunity. After somebody has bought and we sent them to the thank you page, and then we delivered this welcome email. You know, this is when we should enroll them in an affiliate program so that they share the opt-in page for your webinar. And this will bake in some viral sharing into your architecture. And so this sort of strategic recommendation, uh, I do have the skills to do this, but most of my, of my tangible output is in systems and selling. And that's why people tend to come to me. And I've had the great good fortune to work with some, uh, some high-level clients in a lot of different industries. But the, the niche that I've chosen to focus on is thought leaders, people who have something to say and something to sell. Uh, I've worked with nationally syndicated radio hosts on helping them develop their interview skills into online summits that generated a quarter of a million dollars each time we launched a summit. And we did six of these summits in 2015. And so Lisa Gar, the host of The Aware Show, she was already interviewing people on multiple radio platforms. And so we said, well, let's go ahead and have you interview people who have a product to sell and make you an affiliate of those products. Uh, Mike Rayburn, the co-chair of the Influence Conference, uh, he and I have been working together for more than a year, and we've done a lot of really great work together. Uh, we've made a membership site. Uh, I did a, an audit of his body of work and pulled out different pieces of content. I said, look, here's a lead magnet. We're going to use this for a funnel for this type of person. Here's another lead magnet, and we're going to use this to cross-sell this product that we're going to create. And so we've made a whole lot of great material for his audience based on his offerings. And that's the sort of work that I like doing with people. And if you need that sort of work done, then I encourage you to get in touch and schedule a marketing consultation. There's a link in the description below. And if you've liked this presentation on seven steps to turn your signature speech into a signature offer, I'd be honored if you shared it with somebody else who would benefit from this material. Thanks so much. Good luck out there.